this day and age with all of the grocery prices going up, it's really important that we're able to buy our products when we can afford them. We want to lock in those prices. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie and this is Rouse Rising. It's my place on the internet where I like to share with you guys all about my motherhood, my approach to holistic lifestyle and parenting, and all of the things food related. Now that can be from grocery hauls, to meal prepping, to cooking and prepping food for long-term food storage. If that's something that you are into, be sure that you click subscribe down there and hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date with all of my latest uploads. Today I have for you an Azure standard, and this happens once a month, and I also ran into Walmart after I picked up my Azure standard to see if I could find some goods that weren't delivered in my order. Sometimes they run out of things that are uh, in stock when you place your order, and then when they fulfill your order, a lot of times those items can run out of stock. Now there's a few tricks and tips to be sure that you get the items that you need, maybe in a different quantity, but Alas, I still haven't figured all of this out with Azure Standard, and I'm still working to iron out the kinks so that I can get all my orders filled every month. This month, I did not get wheat berries, which was one thing that I was really, really excited about, and I've been trying to get wheat berries for the last four months, and every time the particular kind of wheat berries that I place into my cart they're always sold out when my order shows up. So I wasn't able to get any wheat berries. I wasn't able to get any large bags of flour. They were sold out of both the hard white wheat flour and the hard red wheat flour. They were also sold out of the wheat berries for both of those. Both things that I had in my cart that I did not get in this order, but I got some other things. So no worries, I've got plenty here to show you today. So without further ado, let's get to it. And then after that, I will show you back behind me what I got from Walmart to fill in the gaps for the rest of the month and get us through until my big monthly grocery haul at the beginning of April. So I'm just trying to fill in the gaps with the Walmart haul and with the Azure Standard Haul, I've been trying to build up my food stores. I've been trying to get foods that I'm able to store for longer periods of time. And this day and age, with all of the grocery prices going up, it's really important that we're able to buy our products when we can afford them and have them in supply at the price. We want to lock in those prices, right? So everybody's kind of in a buying frenzy right now when it comes to food and especially food that is stored for longer terms. And I, that's definitely why I haven't been able to get wheat berries. There's a lot of people buying whole food items that they, that they can later process into, for instance, flour or whatever it is that they need. Buying dried beans to be sure that you have some protein on your food shelf in case there's a situation where you can't get food in the supermarket or you're not able to secure your own food otherwise. You want to make sure that you have a little bit of food stored in your back stock so that you are taken care of and your family's taken care of. Get your houses in order. Oh, there goes my bread machine. If you hear the little thump, 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 that's the bread machine. I might have to pause it to finish this video, but it is making our daily loaf of bread. If you've watched this channel long enough, then you know I bake bread every single day and I always have a fresh loaf of bread going for my family and we burn through bread like I said, a loaf a day. We make French toast, we make sandwiches and all that kind of stuff. That's why it's so important for me to have my bread flours and my bread grains so that I can make my family a loaf of bread every day. It's, it's a food staple. And if you're not making your own bread yet, now's an excellent time to learn how to do that. If you saw my last Azure haul video, then you learned about all of my tricks and tips to make the most of your Azure standard haul. Uh, things like writing the dates on your products to be sure that you are first in, first out. FIFO. You want to, the items that you're bringing into your house go behind the items that you've already had so that you're sure to keep your dates in order and that you are moving products out that came in later at a later time, you know. So for instance, things like beans and uh, any canned good items, things like that, you want to make sure that your dates the most recent expiration dates are in the front, so you're using those up first, and then your later expiration dates are in the back, you're using those up last. So that is something that I do. I would write all of the dates that I received all of these, and I also like to write the pricing on these products so that I know 
oh, well, it's gone up $5 this month, so maybe this month isn't the time to buy this particular product. Wait for the prices to come back down because that happens. We get our inflation, we get our deflation. It happens, that's the way it is. Right now we are in a process of inflation, so buying products right now and securing the prices that they're at right now for longer term is ideal if you can do that, if you can afford to do that, if you can budget your money in a way to do that. We've been able to budget our grocery money over the last two years in a way that I am able to slowly build up my back stock of food stores. And that's such a blessing that I've been able to do that. I know that that's not possible for everybody, um, but I'll talk to you some more about how you can do that, how you can get little bits at a time to set aside for a rainy day. Um, so with this month's Azure order, I didn't get a lot of stuff. At least it doesn't look like a lot of stuff here. But let's just go through everything one by one and I will tell you. This time I got a different cheese than I got last time. I got 10 pounds of cheese and the particular cheese that I got this time came individually wrapped and I don't actually have to rewrap these. I thought it was gonna come in a giant block of cheese like my last month's order did. It did not, and last month what I did was I took that big block of cheese and I split it up into smaller portions and vacuum sealed them so that they would last us a long time. We are down to our last little one pound block, or what is this? Yes, this is about a one pound block right here. This is our last block, and I would say the 10 pounds of cheese that we bought last month got us through one month with a family of seven, and now we are on to our next 10 pounds of cheese. And this is a different cheese. I'm probably gonna go back to the Grazier's cheese that we got last month. My husband said, keep getting this one, but this cheese was about 12 to $15 less expensive so I went ahead and got this and they claim that their cows are pasture they are raised on grass and then they also get supplemental grain in the winter time but they weren't able to make the grass-fed claim that graziers is able to make so and they also don't make an organic claim however this is raw mild cheddar so we're happy that it's a raw cheese and we're also happy that we know that there's strict regulations on food and to be able to stamp something organic or to be able to stamp something grass-fed and so for those you pay an inflated cost for those certifications. This particular cheese doesn't have those certifications, doesn't have those labels, so it was going to be less expensive and so for this month I felt okay spending less money, trying out a different cheese. This is all about um, finding what suits our family and suits our needs and suits our flavors. So with that said, these are the 10 pounds of cheese that I got and they came individually packaged in little containers like this. This is the Landmark Raw Mild Cheddar. And I'm gonna tell you the price of that. All right, let's start back here at the back. These one gallon jars, these are huge, and these are what I'm gonna use for food storage. I had to buy the lids separately, and I've bought them on a previous Azure order when they were out of stock of these. So I already have the lids, and I went ahead and bought four of these one gallon jars. These are $4.47 each, and they're gonna be wonderful for storing my beans and legumes and different things like that for longer term storage. You heard me mention that they were out of flour for the most part. I was able to buy the flour in smaller bags. I wanted a 25 pound bag of this um, ultra fine unbleached bread flour and they didn't have any larger bags. All they had available were these 10 pound bags and it comes out to 99 cents per pound for this bread flour. I paid $9.98 for a 10 pound bag and I multiply that times three. I got 30 pounds of flour and I'm excited about that. Um, I would have saved money obviously if I had bought a smaller, I mean, I would have saved money if I had bought a bulk bag of this. However, they didn't have it available. So sometimes when you place your Azure orders, you do need to account for what they have in stock and sometimes you have to buy the smaller quantities, which isn't gonna save you as much money, but hey, you're still able to get your products. Down here, this is a large 25 pound bag of organic regular rolled oats. Last time I got gluten-free oats and they were more expensive. Uh, we don't have to be gluten-free in this home. Um, for a period of time there, we were gluten-free and I should be with my autoimmune issues. And my daughter, she has an intolerance to a lot of different foods. Um, but since we've 
cleansed her diet and gotten her off of all of the public school food two years ago when she started kindergarten. She was eating a lot of their food and that's when all of her allergies erupted. And I say she's allergic to government food. So once we got her back on all of the homemade food that we made here, those allergies disappeared and she was able to tolerate all of her foods better. So I went ahead and just got the regular rolled oats and this was $27.77 for a 25 pound bag that comes out to a dollar and 11 per pound. This has gone up quite a bit because I believe the organic oats and the regular oats are about $17 for a 25 pound bag. Um, and these were less, these were around $21 um, a couple months ago and they have gone up quite a bit in price right now. So I'm glad that I've secured this 25 pound bag of Oats, we went through 25 pounds in, let's see, November, December, January, February, March. In five months, we went through five or 25 pounds. So we're going through about five pounds of oats a month. And I haven't been making granola. It would probably go a lot faster than that, but I am using it in my bread baking and I'm also using the rolled oats for oatmeal in the mornings. Okay, we make nice cream. And so I bought a 20 pound box of frozen bananas. And these are already sliced up bananas. I know you guys are probably going to say, yeah, you could have bought, you know, and sliced them up and did all that yourself. Ah, tis the season of life for something easy. And when I calculated these, these are organic bananas and they came out at $2.15 a pound for already sliced organic bananas. So I feel like that's a pretty good price for organic bananas that are pre-sliced and already processed for me. All we have to do is throw them in the blender with our other fruits. And this big box of bananas is gonna make us lots of nice cream. It makes it easier for my husband to give us a special treat in the evenings. He loves to make us nice cream and that's just gonna make his life a lot easier. Coming around here to some of our non-food items in my marker that I've been writing prices on. Um, I decided I would give this Country Save laundry detergent a try. It comes in a box, which I love because there's no plastic for this. I'm not quite sure about the price. I'm going to try this out this month. I haven't um, compared prices with any other place with any other uh, detergents at the moment, but this was $16.04 for 80 loads in a standard washer or 160 loads in a high efficiency wa washer. I could get a 25 pound bag of laundry detergent, I think for around $70. So if I like this, I am going to be buying this in bulk in a larger bag, and then we'll store some of it in a jar on the counter near our washer so that we can use that. But um, I like that it's uh, fragrance free, it's biodegradable, it's dye free. So those are all things and plastic free. So those are things that really float my boat. I love that. So I'm glad that I got this to try out. I hope that I love it as much as I want to love it. If you know what I'm saying. We also got some of these oxygen absorber packets. I got these to throw in my five gallon bucket. I got 10 for $5.76. So these are the five gallon bucket size and I can just toss this in with my foods and that's going to help keep them fresh for the long haul. The banana chips. Did I tell you guys I got banana chips? Well, let's go over it now. Uh, we love these for snacking and yes, I know I can make them. Uh, I'm not going to. And I got two pounds of these. I also got two pounds last month and we still have a pound left. I was very conservative giving them to the kids as snacks because I didn't want to run out. But now I know that we can go through about this much in a month. My kids don't like fresh bananas so much. So a lot of times the bananas that are back here, me and my husband eat these and then we throw them into uh, banana bread, smoothies, things like that. So I got those from Walmart. But yeah, these are a nice snacking chip and... Um, for both of these was eight eighteen, so these were four dollars and nine cents each per pound of bananas. And yes, we really enjoyed them. They're yummy, yummy to snack on. So if you need a quick and easy snack for your family, I definitely recommend getting the dehydrated um, fruits. I got the dehydrated mango. This was 
$49.36 from Azure. I price checked it recently at Sherm's Thunderbird and they wanted $55 for five pounds of dried mango. So I saved nearly $6 buying it from Azure Standard. And this big bag hopefully will last us quite a while. Like I said, this is a five pound bag of dried mango. It's rather large. We're gonna store this in one of our gallon size jars and this is going to be an easy snack for Aaron to take on the golf course when he takes the kids. They can just keep some dried mango in their golf bags and that's a wonderful snack for them along with a bag of nuts and boom they've got their golf time snack. He does take two kids with him golfing every single day so I'm grateful for that and I want to have some easy nutritious snacks for them to take along with them. All right the very next thing I did was I went to Walmart and I grabbed how many pounds is this? Okay, so I grabbed six pounds of Gala apples. Those are nice and small and petite for the kids just to grab and eat. Those are gonna be nice snacks for them for the next couple of weeks as we finish out the month of March. I just got some things to top up my grocery haul and then I got some things for the pantry as well. I like to use this um, flour. I'm having a hard time, like I said, finding wheat berries and finding flour in bulk. So I went ahead and grabbed another bag of this um, flour. This is non-GMO. It is not organic, but it's something that I can keep and I've had it in the freezer. That's one thing you want to do with all of your flour and grain products is throw it in the freezer for a few days and that's going to be sure to kill all of the larvae, all of the eggs, all of the bugs that are in your flour. If you're not doing that in about six months, this flour will be riddled with bugs because of the eggs and things that are present in our wheat and grain products. If you don't know about that, don't be afraid, don't be alarmed. It's totally fine and safe to eat, but you do need to freeze it to kill the bugs. Down here, I got two uh, jars of the bread machine yeast. Now this is the same cost as normal yeast and I just buy the bread machine one. It, it's five dollars per jar and the regular yeast is also five dollars per jar but I like to use this um, in my bread loaves that I use in my bread machine and it just makes life easier when we need a quick loaf. I also make sourdough in the bread machine now and I make sourdough by hand uh, but this is quick and easy for those days that I'm forgetful and I need a loaf in a couple of hours so that gets it done. Back here, I bought an eight pound bag of pinto beans. If you saw a few months ago, I bought a 25 pound bag of organic pinto beans. I wanted to get some more. I plan on canning some beans for refried beans. I've tried to can refried beans before. It did not work out. So if you guys saw that video and were wondering whatever happened to those canned refried beans Katie was talking about, I made them and we had to eat them immediately because only one jar sealed and the other jar jars did not seal. So we had to eat them immediately. Uh, but this time I am going to do the no soak and I might soak some of them, but I plan on doing uh, jars of beans. So all I have to do is dump them out in the pan and mash them up and we'll have some refried beans, delicious refried beans that way already with all the seasonings and everything in them. The kids love bean burritos. So that's what we're going to be doing with these pinto beans. These are great for long term storage. They do need to be canned or something within the next year or two, so I'm not in a big rush with those, but I'm happy that I have them because everywhere has been running out of stock. People are panic buying, and just that's just a little bit of extra security. These inexpensive, great value pinto beans are just great to have on hand for those emergency situations. Uh, you heard in my last haul, I forgot to get yogurt, so I grabbed the Great Value Greek yogurt. And I'm finding with all of the Great Value products, they have minimal um, ingredients, and a lot of them don't use um, some undesirable things in them. So it's well priced. The ingredients are mostly clean for the most part. Um, I'm not complaining about that. And then down here, we got some cultured sour cream from my husband's animal based. Uh, diet. He eats a carnivore based diet and that includes animal products, which is he loves his sour cream on his ground meat and his eggs and things like that. And that helps get him some extra calories, some extra fat into his diet. So we get the big tubs of that. I bought two tubs at the beginning of the month. So we've got a tub to finish us for the rest of this month and into next month. We also grabbed some yellow popping corn. This is something that is a great shelf stable item to have on hand because 
popcorn is such a wonderful snack for the kids. They love popcorn. So I'm slowly just, I'm going to order a five pound bag from Azure, but I went ahead and grabbed this two pound bag because we've been going through some popcorn lately. We eat popcorn probably two or three times a week, I'd say. The kids are loving it. And um, we go through about a cup at a time because I make two batches in our popcorn pop popper and uh, the kids love it. So we do it for movie nights, for snack days, after school and all of that. So I'm going to start building up my supply of popcorn and I'm going to do it just one bag at a time right now just because of budgeting reasons and things like that. We're just doing a little bit at a time to build up our long-term food storage. So that's where you're going to see some of the items over here. But first, I got some grapes, I got some lettuce to make some salads, and I got three large bunches of bananas to get us through on the produce side of things. So we just got a little bit of produce to hold us out till the end of the month. I also have some frozen fruit and vegetables in my freezer, so I'm not too worried about variety there. These four fresh produce items are going to get us through these last couple weeks of March. Okay, you heard me talk about the strawberry fruit spread. It has minimal ingredients in it, and it does not have any high fructose corn syrup, which I love. So just strawberries, sugar, pe pectin, and... Uh, citric acid. I went ahead and grabbed two more jars of that. I still have some for my kids' lunches for school. But like I said, I'm building a back stock slowly and surely. And so that's why I grabbed two more of those while they had them in stock. I also grabbed two cans of this premium chunk chicken breast. This is so easy just to throw in a meal that you're cooking. And it's just, it's wonderful. And it's great to have for long-term food storage because it is a shelf-stable protein. The same thing with this chunk light tuna. I grabbed the big cans of both of these so that I can put those away and save them for a rainy day. Then I was looking for an alternative. Uh, one of my kids cannot have peanuts. She's not highly anaphylactic allergic, but she just can't eat peanuts or peanut butter, but I needed to get something for my other kids. She's uh, eating sunflower butter, and for them, this natural peanut butter had, once again, minimal ingredients. Um, it does have palm oil in it, which I'm not too crazy about, but peanuts, sugar, palm oil, salt. And yes, sugar is the second ingredient. We don't really hate on sugar that much because we know sugar in moderation is okay. It gives us energy. It's, you know, not 100% healthy, but sugar is not going to kill us as long as we're mindful of how we're eating. So I grabbed the big, big, big two pound jars of that. Um, I'll probably keep getting these to build my back stock for sandwiches because I love making bread for my family. And in a pinch, we can always have sandwiches as long as I have peanut butter and jelly and some sun butter. Next month, I'm going to stock up on sun butter for Hagen. Uh, I also grabbed two large jars of this fruit cocktail. Again, just another shelf-stable item to have in our back stock in our stores. This one is in heavy syrup. I'm not going to hate on that. It was a good deal, so I went ahead and grabbed that. And then these carnation milks, these were $4 a piece. It makes three quarts of milk, and that's just good to have for emergency situations. Uh, if we need milk for whatever reason, we're going to have a little bit of milk to get us through. I can also use this in cooking recipes with my breads. And then Azure Standard has a really awesome but very expensive powdered milk that is from grass-fed cows and organic and all of that. But it's $50 for a five-pound bag of dehydrated milk. So I just went ahead and grabbed this. I'm going to keep my eye out at the store for other kinds of dehydrated milks. When I was growing up, my family, when I was growing up, my family drank exclusively dry powdered milk and my dad would make a big old jug, um, one of those plastic pitchers. He would make a big pitcher full of dehydrated milk and water and mix that up. And that's what we drank. It wasn't until I was about eight or nine years old, actually, that I had my first taste of fresh milk from the grocery store, you know, in the gallon jugs. And that happened once my parents were divorced and my mom just started buying, she was a single mother, she just started buying whole milk by the gallon. We loved it so much that we were drinking whole milk by the gallon daily. 
I am so happy, so thankful, so blessed that we are able to get our milk and eggs from a local lady down the road. We get our eggs from one person and we get our milk from another lady. And it's so wonderful being able to afford to give my kids fresh raw milk from the farm. Um, something I wish I would have had growing up, but I know that I grew up healthy and well drinking powdered milk. So I know that in a pinch, that is a great option for me and my family. It'll be just fine in an emergency situation. We will have some milk to get our babies through that time period, if it ever gets to that time period. But in the meantime, I'm gonna be rotating this out. So I'm gonna use that powdered milk to make things like hot chocolate and to use it in my bread recipes. So that um, powdered milk is gonna be used up and it will be rotated through. No worries about that. If you guys have any questions about this grocery haul, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of this today. Give this video a like, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all of my grocery hauls and all of my cooking videos. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Until next time, bye.